The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by the Holiday Inn Select. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park Road in Woburn. Hello everybody and welcome to the Easy Gourmet. I'm your host and chef Vinny Felici. Today we're going to be doing three easy recipes. The recipes that you can do at home, minimal ingredients and minimal steps. Hence the name, the Easy Gourmet. The first recipe will be uh, grilled naan bread with a arugula salad. We're going to be doing sautéed scallops and we're going to be doing a very simple shrimp scampi recipe, recipe on top of bed of linguine. Uh, so why don't we get started? Our first uh, recipe is the roasted uh, naan bread. It's a bread you can get at your local grocer's. It has a little more depth and flavor than some other uh, ready-made pizza crusts and some other ready-made Syrian breads. So we just open up the package. What we want to do is we want to oil these up and we want to grill them, get them a little bit toasty, and then we're going to build the salad on top of these breads. So we just take a little bit of olive oil oil up both sides minimal olive oil you don't have to go too uh, too crazy and I have a uh, preheated uh, grill outside you can also if you don't have a grill readily available you can do, do these on an electric grill or you can do them in the oven don't use a cookie sheet when you do it in the oven preheat the oven to 500 oil them up a little bit or if you're watching calories you can just put a, dampen them with a little bit of water put them on the grate in your oven and roast them for about five or ten minutes till they get a little bit crispy and that's all you have to do so uh, why don't we retreat to our grill outside and here we are next to our hot grill already preheated you always want to make sure you clean off your grates from last night's dinner Put that aside and you want to put them on an angle so you can crisscross them although it really doesn't make any difference because they but they'll just grill a little bit better close the cover we need about uh, two or three minutes on each side so we give those a quarter turn we got to do the other side also what you're looking for here is you want you want a little bit of give but then you want a little bit of softness also. You don't want them crispy crispy, you want them like halfway to crispy. And I think we're good. And now that we have our naan, our grilled naan fresh and hot off the grill, we're gonna use a little bit of a secret ingredient, fig jam which is available in your uh, grocer but you may, be have, you may have a tough time finding it. it's not necessarily in the jelly section or the jam section it's in the specialty food section so you put the jam put a tablespoon or so of jam on each uh, grilled bread spread that on you don't have to be really fancy here you just put that on and the heat from the breads will will have it uh, soak into the bread Our next step is uh, a little bit of Parma prosciutto. I like the imported Parma prosciutto. Uh, you may or may not know that prosciutto from, uh, that is made in this country is processed with uh, nitrates, uh, different kinds of preservatives and chemicals, where the prosciutto from Italy or the Parma region is only uh, processed with salt. It is rather expensive, but it's worth it, believe me. Let me put a couple of slices of that on.
You could have this dish like in the summertime when it's really hot. You don't really want to do a whole lot. You can do this and have this with a glass of wine and maybe uh, some olives and something like that. Just, or have this as an appetizer for guests. Our next step, as I come over to the refrigerator, is our arugula. Arugula is kind of a, well it is a green, but it's kind of, it has a little peppery taste. So we're going to just dress that a little bit with a simple dressing. And what I like about using arugula here, if you're not partial to arugula, you can use a mescaline salad or something a little sweeter. But what I like is the sweetness of the fig jam, the saltiness of the prosciutto, and the, the pepperiness of the, uh, of the arugula to call, kind of all blend together. And it's a, a vast amount of different flavors going on here. So we just put a little bit of black pepper. A little bit of kosher salt, that's all I use. I think it has more flavor than regular canister salt. And a little bit of oil. If you prefer a little bit of a different kind of dressing, you can do that. But we're trying to keep it simple here today. And you just kind of mix that up. Don't use any bottle dressings on this. It'll be too many flavors mixing. So just use a little bit of oil will be fine. Pile that on. Get rid of that. Just move these here for a minute. What we want to use next is a little bit of uh, fresh mozzarella, which I've had sitting out and it's nice and soft. Put a few pieces of that on. Fresh mozzarella is, uh, is uh, processed in its own uh, brine solution. It doesn't have, uh, it's not aged like regular mozzarella is. And it's, uh, it's sweet, it's natural. If you can find actually buffalo mozzarella, where this is actually kind of fashioned after, it would be a little, uh, be rather expensive, but it would go with this dish also. I don't know if you can actually find it out in the suburbs, probably only in the Boston area, but if you do find it and you want to use it, it's well worth it. And we got a little bit of tomato on this. I got some fresh tomatoes I picked from the garden. We just want to cut away the, the pieces that are... You can also use store-bought tomatoes, it doesn't matter, but I happen to have these and it kind of uh, is a nice little added extra. Just chop those up, rough chop. And just place a couple of those on top. And what we want to do just quickly, as I have the broiler on, preheated to uh, well, the broiler is being preheated to 500. We just want to put this under the broiler just for a minute to kind of wilt the arugula a little bit and kind of melt the cheese just slightly. We don't want to melt the cheese like it would be in the pizza. We just want to kind of melt it slightly and heat the top, uh, the top part of this whole dish up. So we'll just put that into the oven for about a minute or two. And while that is... While those are uh, crisping up, I just want to show you our next dish. I'll get started on our next dish, which is sautéed scallops. What you want to do is... Um, I've had the scallops. They're washed and they're cleaned. And check them for any uh, piece of... This. These have already been shelled. I bought these already shelled. But uh, you may want to take that little muscle off sometimes when that cooks it's a little tough and you don't want to uh, you don't want to really eat that you can if you'd like but it uh, won't be as tender as the rest of the scallop and uh, so check your scallops to make sure they don't have that and those look great and uh, you wipe them off I already wiped them off but you want to wipe them off uh, to make sure there's no excess moisture so let's get back to our uh, Let's get back to our oven to see how our pizzas are doing. And this is how they should look. As you can see, the cheese is slightly melted, the greens are slightly wilted, and these are ready to uh, just let them cool down slightly and they're ready to serve. You can cut them uh, you know, in, into one or two or three or four slices. 
And when you do, just let me demonstrate something. I'll show you a little bit of a... What I like to do is when I serve them, they're not perfectly round, so they will be a little difficult in, in cutting. But you can just put your knife through. And cut them into four pieces. There's always somebody who wants to get a hold of me. <laughs> and just put those on a serving platter. And you want to finish that off just to give a little bit of a finished look. Finish it off with a little bit of uh, a Kalamata olive just to give it that finished look like some of the pizza restaurants do. And that's all. And there's your first dish. Our next dish is going to be uh, sautéed scallops. These are gorgeous scallops with the muscle already taken off. And uh, I've washed them and I've dried them. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you dry them with some paper towels prior to cooking, especially the way we're going to be cooking them today because uh, they won't uh, caramelize like you would want. You'll have to evaporate all the moisture in them first before they actually caramelize and cooking time will take longer and you are in danger of actually having the scallop kind of toughen up. So what we want to do first is we're actually we're going to cook these, we're going to season them first we're going to cook them, we're going to saute them in a hot pan, so let me get the hot pan going. You want to go about uh, three quarters, like medium high, you don't want to completely blast it on high, you want that to go on, uh, on just medium high. I got a little spinach to saute, uh, saute after the scallops are finished, we'll be putting the sauteed scallops on this, and this can be served actually as a as an appetizer or as a meal, but we're pretty much going to set it up today like an appetizer. So you could serve one or two on a bed of spinach. So what I want to do is make sure our pan is, uh, you can use the uh, three second test. If you can hold your hand over it for three seconds, that means it isn't hot enough yet. So we're, gonna, we're going to wait a second or so to let that heat up. Then uh, you always want to make sure that when you uh, put oil in your pan, you always want to put the oil in the pan while the pan is hot. Whether or not you have a non-stick pan or a stainless steel pan, that pan needs to be hot so the foods will caramelize better. If you put the oil in the pan, it's not going to reach temperature uh, equivalently with the temperature of the pan. So always have, always remember hot pan, cold oil. That way you'll know that uh, your oil won't sit in the pan as it, as it, as it comes to temperature because the oil will break down. And I think we might, be, we might be okay here. We want about two or three tablespoons of oil to, to cover the bottom. No, you don't, want to, you don't want to fry them in oil. You just want to kind of coat them in oil. So you just want the bottom to be kind of like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. Just very, very little bit of oil. Then back to the scallops, you want to lightly, lightly season them with salt and pepper. And again, like I said, I love to use kosher salt. I think it has more of a flavor, but use whatever is readily available and whatever you really like. Just turn these over. Season both sides, no matter what you're cooking, always season both sides. If you feel like your seasoning is a little too much, then don't season as much, but always season both sides. You want the flavor to be equivalent on both sides of your food. And a little bit of black pepper. And I think we are ready to go. Oh yeah, you'll hear the sizzle. That way you know you're ready. If you put them in and they don't sizzle, take it out because what you'll be doing is you'll be steaming the food. We're going to leave these on for about two or three minutes or till we get a little golden brown crust on each side. As you can see, they're just starting to brown a little. What I want to do is I want to get a dish to put those on so I can have those rest while I do the spinach. 
And you notice that I did have them on one dish, put that dish into the sink. Don't have raw food mixing in with your cooked food. There is a possibility of contamination, but I think you all know that. I'd say another minute or so. These cook really quick. And let's oh my god. These are ready to turn. These are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. So we just want to cook the other side for two or three minutes. And while those are cooking, we're going to want to add lemon right at the very end. You just poke those a little just to see uh, there's a little give. There's a little give. You take a look at the bottom. Just needs just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I might just raise the heat just a little to kind of move them along. So now at the very end of cooking, I think these are all ready. The golden brown on the other side. You just want to add a little bit of lemon. Just to kind of uh, coat those a little bit with a little bit of lemon juice. You're going to get a little bit of flame there. Just burn that off. Actually, you could add a little bit of brandy here just to give it a little more flavor, but we're not going to do that today. So take those off. You want to take those off. Keep them in a warm place. Fortunately, I have a... Uh, a heat lamp built into my stove area so those can stay warm there take a little bit of spinach just kind of saute that as you would don't overcook it because it's very you know how spinach is it cooks like really quick you just kind of want to wilt it a little and don't be afraid to season this also. You have a little bit of lemon juice left in there. You have um, a little bit of oil in there. And you have this, the flavor from the, uh, the brininess from the sea scallops. So you put a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And you want to saute this, like I said, two or three minutes till it wilts. Especially where you are medium high or close to high. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cook rather quickly. You want a little bit of crunch left in your vegetables. That way it holds its color. If you wanted to throw a clove of garlic in there, like a whole clove of garlic, to kind of flavor that juice, you could do that. There's no rules in the Easy Gourmet. It's the way you want to have it. And I think that's it. So what we want to do is we want to get a platter. And we platter the spinach. This almost looks good enough to eat. We have the spinach, and you should put your scallops around that. And uh, use that little extra juice that you have. Don't, be, don't waste anything. And there you have it. Sautéed scallops on a bed of spinach. And like I said, you can have this as an appetizer. Or actually, you, uh, you can have this as a meal. The Easy Gourmet is sponsored by the Holiday Inn Select. Come visit us at 15 Middlesex Canal Park Road in Woburn. Okay, I know, uh, well, our next dish is going to be shrimp scampi the easy way. But I did, I know I said that you have to have hot pan and cold oil. But this is one of those rare occasions where I don't do that. And the reason why I don't do it is because I like the oil to come up the temperature slowly. So the, uh, and we're going to be using garlic and shallots in this recipe. And I want the garlic and shallots to, to flavor the oil. 
rather than just brown and crisp on the outside. Then when the shrimp go into it, the, the oil is still very low and that way the shrimp will absorb all those flavors. If you flash fry them, yes they will cook and they will probably taste pretty good. The only thing is you won't have the flavor go completely through your shrimp. They'll be on the outside. So the, first, the flavor will be on the outside. So the first thing you want to do is you want a couple of cloves of garlic and we want a shallot. For all of you who are not exactly sure what a shallot is, it's somewhere in between garlic and an onion. And it has a little bit more milder flavor than an onion and a little bit less mild flavor of garlic. So they put the two together and somehow they come up with a shallot. So what we want to do is we want to cut the end off. Make sure you have a sharp chef's knife when you're doing work. And make sure that your knife has a nice little what they call tang on here. The tang is that little V that you rest uh, your fingers on. That way that the back of the knife won't cut into your, uh, your fingers as you're cutting your food. So what we do is we cut shallot. And you just be careful when you do that. Take the skin off. I think we can use half a shallot for this dish. We're going to cook, be cooking like around 13 shrimp, which is about a half a pound. Put that aside. And what you want to do is you just kind of want to chop that roughly. You don't, you don't want it minced. You just want it chopped. If you mince it, you might get some of the inner sour flavors of your shallot and even your garlic also. You just want to kind of finely chopped. And you get your garlic. Just bang the skin off the back of your knife. Have the blade, the sharp part, going forward away from you. And then you want to finally don't, when you do use your chef's knife, a lot of people aren't used to using it. Don't be chopping with it like this. You're going to dull it right away. What you want to do is rest the front part of your chef's knife, which I prefer a regular chef's knife as opposed to a German cicado because the, a Japanese cicado, sorry, a Japanese cicado knife because the bottom of those knives are straight across and they're very hard to rock. A regular chef's knife has a little bit of a bow to it, so you can rock that on your cutting board. That's one thing to remember when you're buying knives. That Japanese knife looks really nice sitting there on the shelf, but the thing is, if you're not experienced at using it, it's very hard to use. And when you have to rock it, you have to rock it on its very tip. But when you have a regular chef's knife like this is, it's very easy to rock. So what you want to do is keep your, your opposite hand curled under somewhat so you don't cut your fingers off, and just thinly slice your garlic. And you toss that into your saute pan. And you add a little bit of oil. This recipe definitely is not for the, uh, anyone that's watching their weight. Because there is some oil here in it and there is some butter in it. And we've got about a half a pound of shrimp. And we want about two or three tablespoons of butter. Just kind of cut that up. Saltless butter. And always remember when you are cooking it's probably better to use saltless butter only because you're able, to, you're able to season the dish the way you want it. If you get salt, butter with salt in it, it may be difficult to alter the flavoring. So it's always good to uh, have ingredients that don't actually have any additives to them. We want to get that going on the stove at medium heat. Like I said, we want we kind of want to sweat the garlic and the shallots. We don't want to sear them and fry them like, like, uh, like a stir fry. We want them kind of going slow. And I'll show you the shrimp that we have today. The shrimp we have today is what they call 1625s, 1620s. That means that there's at least 16 to 20 per pound. What I have done is I have cleaned out the digestive tract, which you should always do. I left the uh, tails on to give it a little better presentation. And uh, then you see there's a digestive tract on the inner side of the shrimp also. What you want to do is you want to take your uh, paring knife, hold it somewhere on the blade, don't be afraid of it. It's not going to cut you as long as you have a nice tight grip. And hold the shrimp this way in your opposite hand and go a little way into the flesh and pull out that digestive tract.
That gives you, it's okay to eat, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's good to have that removed. That way, uh, I think I have another couple here that I didn't do. Well, maybe I did clean them. Just bear with me. I don't see as good as I used to. Okay, I have one more. Again, hold your um, paring knife with the blade away, slightly into the flesh, and pull that out. One thing you don't have to go out and buy when you uh, want to clean shrimp is one of those shrimp cleaners. I'm one that, when you buy little gadgets for your kitchen, buy gadgets that are multi-useful. If you buy something to clean your shrimp, that's pretty much all you can use it for. Then you're going to have your kitchen all full of gadgets that you don't need. So come over to the stove, we'll see how this is doing. I have a pot of uh, boiling water. It's unsalted right now. So what I want to do is bring that up to a rolling boil because we're going to have our bed of uh, shrimp on top of a bed of pasta. Add about two or three tablespoons, depending on how you like it, of salt. Again, in my kitchen there's only kosher salt. And uh, we have a little box of linguine that we're going to be using today. You don't have to, a lot of people put um, oil into their water. You don't have to do that as long as you stir it kind of frequently. Plus oil floats to the top. I don't know if it exactly helps your pasta from not sticking to itself. But I'm thinking why waste good oil? Why put it in the water? You don't need it. So we'll get that going. Turn this down just a little. So these are, uh, these are cooked down somewhat. As you can see, they're not brown. They're just cooked through and they have the oil and the butter flavored. Now we can put our shrimp in. Oop. We'll save that one for the... I'll just get rid of that. So we got this on low now because we don't want the garlic or the shallots to burn and we don't want to overcook the shrimp. So we're very... We do it very, very slowly. You want a little bit of salt on the shrimp because the shrimp are briny and you want just a little bit of salt to balance out that brininess. That's that brininess that kind of comes from seawater. Even though these are probably, I don't know, know if they are or not, but they're probably farm-raised shrimp and they are raised in salt water and they have a little bit of a briny taste. Then a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of, little bit of lemon. And if you want, you can throw this on now, a little bit of parsley. I prefer to use flat leaf parsley. Curly parsley, I'm not sure what it actually is for. Doesn't have any flavor, and it kind of tastes like wax, so I don't use it. But flat, flat leaf Italian parsley is the best way to go. If you don't have any, fresh basil will be good. I recommend not using dried herbs for this recipe. I recommend only fresh herbs. So you want to keep your eye on the shrimp. Like I say, you only need about two or three minutes on each side. You can turn them with the spatula or turn them with tongs, as you can see. When they turn opaque and slightly orange like they are, that means they're cooked. But we're doing it on low, so we're not going to overcook these. The longer they stay in this mixture, the, long, the more flavor will penetrate the shrimp. And as I said before, if we flash fry these on high, yes, they will cook, but you won't get the butter and the oil flavor and the garlic and the shallots to go all the way, all the way through the, um, all the way through the flesh. This needs another minute or so. I like to have my pasta al dente, and the only way to make sure that it's cooked is, I suppose, is to taste it. I don't like to throw it against the wall. I don't like to throw it against anything. This just needs another minute or so. And while that's finishing up, I'm just going to get a colander ready. The one thing that I don't like, and I know everybody goes out and buys them, is those uh, pasta cookers that have an insert that when you pull it out, all the pasta water gets all over the place. I have not found 
the reasoning why that's actually good to own. The thing is, I, I think picking the, the handles do get a little hot on this. I, I think that's why someone invented that pot. But all you gotta do is put a towel, shut your flame off, whether it's electric or gas, shut your heat source off, and pick the pan up with a, uh, with a, uh, with, 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 with the towel and you should be fine. Just gonna taste this now. I like mine al dente, which is to the bite, has a little bit of a bite left to it. Another minute, another minute here. As you can see, this is coming along nicely. The garlic and the shallots are getting just cooked very softly still. Nothing is getting brown, nothing is burning. You want to keep it on low and you should be safe. Why don't we um, take a break till the pasta cooks. Let's come back over to our pasta, see how we're doing. Mmm, that's delicious. Believe me, it isn't that hot to handle. You're only handling one strand. It's not that traumatic. Anybody can do it. I don't have asbestos fingers. That's delicious. That's the show. Shut our heat off, as I said. Come over and get our towel. Our serving platter. Just grab your pan with a towel. And please, do not rinse your pasta under cold water. Right now the starches are developed, as you, as you pour this into the colander, all the hot water is coming out the pasta, but the starches are developing on the outside of the pasta. The starches are the ingredient, the natural starches are the ingredient that lets your sauce stick to the pasta. Just put that in our dish. Come over and get our shrimp. Give it a little bit of a swirl. And you might want to dress this up just a little bit. What I like to do is I like to get a tomato. Tomato wedges here. Do that. Maybe a little bit, a little bit more lemon. You can always serve a lemon wedge on the pasta when you serve after you serve it to someone. And just a little bit more parsley. Always have some fresh parsley on hand. The way to store it is when you buy it at the store, cut the ends off, put in a glass of water like that. Should last all week. In the refrigerator, it's going to wilt. A little bit of chopped parsley. And there you have it. Shrimp scampi, easy gourmet way. So just to recap today's menu, we had the roasted naan with, with uh, the arugula salad topped with uh, fresh tomatoes and uh, fresh mozzarella. We had the sautéed scallops on a bed of spinach. As you can see, uh, some of the crew actually indulged themselves during the break. And of course, shrimp scampi, the easy gourmet way. Um, if anyone has any questions, they like to uh, email the show. We're going to have an email set up. And uh, these recipes uh, don't necessarily have measurements, but I think they're very easy to get yourself started to have some gourmet meals at home, especially after a long day at work. But anyway, that's uh, the Easy Gourmet signing off. This is Vinny Felici again. Hope to see you next time. Happy cooking.